What's up everybody and welcome back to another episode of Tattoo Critiques. I'm Pony Lawson and what we like to do here is talk about your tattoos. Whether you're an artist or a collector, I like to talk about them all. And make sure you stick around to the very end of the video where we talk about my favorite tattoo of the episode, as well as my least favorite tattoo, or as you know we like to call it. Y'all ready for this? All right, guys, so we're working on some collectors today. Let's see what we've got first. So this first tattoo is sent in by Sadab Winchester. And Sadab, he sent in this big boy tattoo from the old big boy restaurants. You know, I used to drive by big boy restaurants when I was a kid, driving by with my sister and mom on road trips or wherever we decided to go. We never could stop though, but um, I do remember them vividly in my mind. I would see the big boy outside holding the hamburger up in his hand, and it was always a really cool memory for me. Kidding. I don't need I don't need burgers. I know it's Astro Boy. I don't know how I know that. I've never seen Astro Boy, but uh, I know it's not Big Boy. But the first thing I notice about this tattoo is uh, it doesn't seem like it's quite centered on the wrist. It seems like it's shifted over to the front a little bit, and I would have liked to seen this tattoo without the glares that are running through it. I, it's just hard for me to kind of see how solid the blacks are and how um, smooth the shading is because unfortunately there is this glare that's kind of running through right on top of it. The outlines seem pretty strong for the most part. There are a couple pieces here and there that seem to get a little thinner than the rest, but for the most part I do like the line weight that was used on this tattoo. I think I would have liked to have seen some other elements in this tattoo as well, maybe a little background or something like that, instead of just the Astro Boy, maybe give him something to look at, or like I said, maybe some kind of environment for him to live in. I pulled up the reference to this image and I noticed that his eyes in the reference were a little bit more flat on bottom than they are in this tattoo. In the tattoo it kind of seems like one eye is a little more round and the other eye is a little more flat like the reference. It seems like his shoulder is just a little sharp, a little sharper than the reference anyhow, but it still reads like a shoulder. But overall it kind of just seems like a simple tattoo. You also sent in this Darth Maul tattoo that I want to talk about for a little bit. This kind of seems like an odd combination of tattoos, the Darth Maul micro we'll call it, and the little flower with the triangle. It kind of seems like they would be better as two separate tattoos, you know maybe just the Darth Maul bust and then just the flower inside the triangle. The first thing I notice about this flower, if we zoom in, is the top right. It kind of seems like the artist may have made a mistake overpassing those leaves with the outline of the triangle. It seems like the triangle outline should have been on the bottom of those leaves, the leaves should have been on top. You shouldn't be able to see both of them. Similarly, how the line ends on the left side of the uh, rose and how it kind of tucks behind that petal, it should have done the same thing with those leaves on the right. And also, the line work isn't the best in those leaves. And when we go over to the Darth Maul, first of all, I feel like the Darth Maul should have been moved over on top of that rose. If we were going to keep those together, I would have put the Darth Maul on top of that rose a little bit more instead of shifted out to the side. Maybe you have something planned for that, I'm not sure, but as it sits I just kind of feel like it's a little off kilter. It kind of seems like the blacks that were used aren't that solid, they seem kind of patchy in some areas. The transition from the blacks to the skin tone in Darth Maul's face I feel like could have been a little bit smoother. It does seem like they were just kind of thrown in there and not really methodically placed. The reds in his face as well kind of just seem very faded and not that strong. I think that could have been remedied with a little bit darker reds, maybe even some black uh, shading and things like that beforehand, before you put the red in. You can always lay color on top of black shades and it would just make that color darker. Uh, it wouldn't necessarily look black, it would just look like a dark red. And same goes for the black parts of the eyes and everything like that as well. I feel like it's just not as strong as it should be. I appreciate you Sadab, thank you for sending those in. So this next tattoo is sent in by Kayla Shea. And Kayla Shea, you sent in this new school type devil and I love this thing. It seems like he's some sort of magical devil. I say that because of the wand in his hand. I do believe that's a wand. Or that's a unicorn horn he ripped off. After all, he is the devil. He is a dick. But let's talk about the technical application of this tattoo. The line weight that was used, the coloring, the shading, the gradients. This tattoo really has everything. It's got it all. You can honestly tell the artist really knows what they're doing. They're a seasoned artist because everything is right where it should be. And the choices of colors are also excellent. To me, it kind of seems like the artist went through and did an entire layer of black shading first first and then put the colors on top of that. And I say that not only because I see all the different variations of red, but it just seems like there is actually true black in those red shades. In doing so, this tattoo is going to stick around forever. Even if the red were to fade out a little bit 10, 20, 30 years from now, 
it's still going to keep that same structure because the black is in there. The little shadow underneath the eyebrows, the shadow in the eye, all the little shadows that are in this thing are very well placed. Again, you can tell the artist knows what they're doing. And finally, I love the lavenders, the bluish tones that you have in the background. I feel like it bounces off the red and the blacks and the yellows in his eyes, and it just ties this whole thing together. There's not much more I can say. I mean, this thing really has it all. So thanks again, Kayla, for sending that one in. I'm really happy we got to check this one out. So the next couple tattoos we're gonna talk about are sent in from Rob DeBosco. Now, Rob DeBosco is a pretty well-known tattoo collector in the industry. Uh, you know, you catch him at a lot of tattoo conventions picking up some of the world's best art from some of the world's best tattooers. He's got a lot of good tattoos that he sent in, but let's just talk about these few. So this first one is the Ravishing Rick Rude from WWF. I like when these unique tattoos come through, you know, because uh, you don't get to see them all the time. It's a nice change of pace, and they're done very well. There is a lot of weird things in this tattoo, and I feel like it just crosses that threshold of weirdness to where you can get away with a lot, like the orange face and the little green lines that are running through the forehead and these odd shapes uh, throughout. Had it not been that weird, I feel like these things would have been out of place, but it just seems like all, all these colors work so well with each other. I mean, it is pop art. There's not much I would have done differently with this tattoo. I maybe would have liked to seen some darker or more bold colors to complement these lighter ones as well, but overall, I think this thing sits pretty well, and it healed amazing. You also sent in this tiger tattoo as well. This thing is crazy. I think this is a great example of a great looking tiger tattoo. I feel like this should be like the benchmark of what to aim for uh, when you're tattooing a tiger. If this thing isn't a healed photo, I know this thing is gonna heal great. You've got all the nice textures in here. You've got all these high contrast, dark value things in here to complement the whites and lighter tones just as well. And it looks like the artist put this in with a very tight mag or even a liner. So again, I know this thing is gonna stick around for some time. And this other one you sent in, is also very cool. It's on the outside of your leg, takes up the entire outside of your leg, and this thing is monstrous. Again, not something you see on a day-to-day -day basis. You can tell that it was made to fit your leg, and the colors are crazy. The textures are cool. It isn't that great of a quality photo, so I don't want to spend too much time on it, and I can't really zoom in to see the you know little details here and there, but this tattoo is very cool. So thank you so much, Rob. I appreciate you sending those in. This next tattoo is sent in by Shane Abraham, and Shane, you sent in this naked lady riding a koi fish. Lucky. So you mentioned this was a flash sheet tattoo made by Big Jock Waddell. You know, I can kind of tell by looking at the design, it kind of seems like an older design. And so let's break this down. I do love the color palette that was used in this, the oranges and the teals. Uh, however, I do have one small worry, and that worry is that the lines and the hair and things like that may bleed together in the future. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how old this is healed. I'm gonna say it's fairly new since I still see a little bit of shininess on there, but those lines that are running through the hair uh, are already a little thick. So my one worry is that five, six, seven years down the road, that hair might end up being one big black blob. Shane, it does kind of seem like her left arm is a little wonky and thin, like it kind of bends in places that it shouldn't. That being said, the lines that were executed in this tattoo are very clean and bold. There are just some design aspects that I would have fixed or polished up. So I know some tattooers like to clean up a lot of old traditional style flash sheets and some people like to get them just as they are. This is probably just one that I would have cleaned up a little bit um, just to avoid that wonky looking arm probably would have thinned out some hair a little bit, but overall the line work to this tattoo is very clean and the colors are very saturated. So as far as uh, the technical application goes, I think this thing is great. There are just some design things that I would have worked on pre-tattoo. Thank you Shane for sending that over. The next tattoo is sent in by Demetrios. This one says, F beer, drink beer. Uh, motto I like to live by. You know this is a bad tattoo. You mentioned it in your email, and I'm just gonna tell you why, if you don't already know. The line work is not that good. It's a little all over the place. You can tell in some areas it's very thin, and some areas are completely blown out. You know, like when you look at the skull on the uh, side, it's very blown out and thick on the jaw, but it's doing that same thing on a lot of the letters everywhere. And like I said, some of the letters are almost falling out as well. So if you look at the E's on the drink beer side, it just doesn't look like they're hanging on very well, right? Like they may not live past another 10 years or so. And if they do, they'll probably be very thin or light. On the contrast of things, you've got this very dark skull on the left side. So it kind of just seems like whoever tattooed you is kind of just rushing through this one. So I don't want to waste a whole lot of time talking about this. I mean, you know it's bad, we know it's bad. Let's move on. Thank you, Demetrius. Thank you for showing the world your sweet tats. This next tattoo sent in is a Joker tattoo from Corey. And Corey, this tattoo healed up so nice. I love the way that this thing looks. It doesn't have uh, exactly a realism feel to it, but it does have a nice like uh, painterly feel to it. But that's something that I really do love. 
and like I said, this tattoo healed up exceptionally. I love the small little hairs that are coming off the top of his head where you've got the blue background behind it. So it kind of gives those hairs a wispy feel. The skin tone that's brought throughout, uh, that's kind of coming through the white makeup on the face, I really enjoy. And to me, I love the lips as well. They look really wet, and I know that was the objective, so uh, excellent job by the artist. There's not a whole lot I can talk about. I mean, there is no line work or anything like that, so I can't really talk about that. And not really much shading, it's just, like I said, kind of a painterly style joker. And it nailed that style very well. So thank you very much for sending that in, and I do appreciate you, Corey. This next one is sent in by Ed DeFilippo. And Ed, you sent in this colored portrait of what I believe is your son, uh, with a little bit of Iron Man on the bottom. And this tattoo is badass. I absolutely love the little Iron Man addition to the bottom, to where it's not just a portrait, but there's something that your son obviously loves in this tattoo as well. And both of them, the portrait was done well, and the Iron Man was done well. It kind of looks like a sticker that's attached to the bottom. So again, good job. I also like the way that your son's arm kind of fades off into your skin tone, that there's not really a hard line, making it look like an awkward part of his body that's just hanging out. So I do like that you have that skin tone that's kind of creeping into the arm, you know, and creeping into the hat and things like that. So we don't have a reference photo to judge to see if this is exactly how this kid looks, but it does look realistic and it does look like a job well done. I tend to find that uh, younger faces are a lot more difficult to tattoo than older faces. Older faces have wrinkles uh, and their faces are a bit more weathered, so there's a lot more there to kind of work with, whereas you have a lot more open area when it comes to younger faces because there's, you know, not as many wrinkles or things like that. So to me, I feel like, again, those younger faces are just a little bit more difficult. But the artist did an exceptional job with capturing the contours of the cheeks and, uh, you know, the folds of the nose and, and the mouth and things like that. So uh, excellent work to the artist on this one. Thank you, Ed, for sending that over. So my favorite tattoo this week was sent in by Kayla. And Kayla, you sent in this super dope devil tattoo uh, that I absolutely love. It's got all the right elements to make this tattoo a home run and the artist knocked this one out of the park. The color saturation, the contrast, the background, uh, again, this thing has it all. And that's why I picked it as this week's winner. So congratulations, Kayla. Thank you again for sending that over. So this week's winner of the coveted toilet tattoo is sent in by Demetrius. So there's really only one reason why I gave you this week's award as the toilet tattoo, and it's just the awful application. This is just not a good tattoo. I'm sure you know that. I'm sure the world knows that now. So let's all bask in the greatness that is your terrible tattoo. Uh, I want to thank everybody who sent in their tattoos for me to critique and uh, also if you are looking to send in your tattoos make sure to send them over to ponycritiques at gmail.com make sure while you're here to like subscribe share this video with your friends and more importantly hit that notification bell so you can be notified when we put up another video that's gonna wrap it up for this week's episode we'll see you next time peace